over the west side of the state at the Silver Lake Sand Dunes. We're here in Silver Lake Park, home to Silver Lake Sand Dunes, a 2,000 acre sand mountain that separates miles of Lake Michigan shoreline and the 690 acre Silver Lake. The Silver Lake Sand Dunes are the only sand dunes east of the Mississippi River that visitors can drive on. You can drive the dunes in your own 4x4s, provided they're outfitted with an ORV sticker and a 10 foot orange flag, or you can rent one. In addition to driving the dunes, many people enjoy sandboarding them. This is a combination of surfing and snowboarding, and boards can be rented around town. The dunes are divided into three areas. The pedestrian area, where no vehicles are permitted. The ORV area, where no pedestrians are permitted. And the third area is leased by Mac Woods for tours, and that's where we're heading right now. Mac Woods Dune Rides began in 1930, when Mac Woods started taking his family out for rides across the sand dunes for entertainment. As interest grew, he began selling rides to tourists in his dune scooter, a four-passenger Model A Ford. Nowadays, they use a four-wheel drive modified vehicle with four aircraft tires that can carry approximately 20 people per ride. They're the only tour company permitted within the dunes, and rides last approximately 40 minutes and take you on a seven-mile route. Michael, what is your favorite part of driving for Mac Woods? Uh, my favorite part of driving for Mac Woods is being able to work outside in the sand. You know, there's a lot, a lot of things you can do that are paintings, mowing lawns, not so much fun as driving outside. And how long have you been doing this? I've been working here for about 12 years, but I've been driving for about six years. Awesome. Thanks a lot. You're having a great ride today. Just south of the Silver Lake Sand Dunes lies the Little Sobble Point Lighthouse. Little Sobble Point Lighthouse was built in 1874 and stands 108 feet tall. Joseph Arthur Hunter served as the head keeper at this lighthouse from 1899 until 1922, longer than any other keeper. Keeper Hunter would patrol the beach near the lighthouse, gathering anything that washed ashore. And by 1922, he had salvaged enough shingles and lumber to build his retirement home. made our way up to Ludington where we're going to check out a couple of lighthouses. I haven't been to Ludington since I was like 14 years old camping with my parents and that's been a few years. But there's one thing I remember about it and it's the House of Flavors. You got to get dessert if you're at the House of Flavors. And when I was a kid, the banana split was my go-to, so I'd be remiss if I got anything but that. All right, we got the pig pin in place. Next up, we're gonna hit the lighthouses. Just behind me at the end of the pier is the Ludington Breakwater Light. It was built in 1924 and stands 57 feet tall. 
This four-sided white pyramidal tower was built with four porthole windows on each of its three decks. The unusual shape was designed to deflect the strong waves of Lake Michigan. The Weather Channel has voted this lighthouse one of the top 10 to see in the United States. Now we're heading down to the Big Point Sabo Lighthouse and it's about 1.8 mile walk. Earlier today, we saw the Little Point Sabo Lighthouse, which is 108 feet tall. Not small, but this is the Big Sabo Point Lighthouse which towers over Lake Michigan at 112 feet in height. This lighthouse was built in 1867 and was the first light station in the area, and it was the last Great Lakes lighthouse to get electricity, indoor plumbing, and heating. A bit of fear surrounded this area in the summer of 1934, when swimmers and boaters in Lake Michigan reported sightings of a large sea serpent. The head light keeper at the time, as well as one of his assistants, solved the mystery when they discovered a large wooden head in midsection on shore near this big Sabo lighthouse. Stephanie and I had a great time hanging out on the shores of Lake Michigan today. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Where would you like to see us go next? What's your favorite place in Michigan? Drop a line down in the comments. Until next time, happy traveling everybody. Be safe.